Justin here. Today we are checking out Ghostbusters by Ray Parker Jr. Fantastic song if you're playing a band and happen to have some gigs around Halloween. Good fun one to play along with the original recording as well. I'm arranging it for two guitar parts on the original recording. There are lots of different layers, a lot of synth parts and stuff. So some of the synth parts I've put on guitar, it's kind of the way I used to play it in covers bands 30 years ago oh my god uh so yeah th that's what i'm going to be showing you today i'm just going to take you through as many of the parts as i can remember doing on the little cover thing at the beginning i was doing a bit of improv as well but i'll show you all of the key moments as i can remember them so let's get to a close-up get started so the intro has two parts one of them plays a lead line it would be note b second fret on the fifth string g which is the fifth fret on the fourth string fourth fret third fret second fret so a little chromatic line then we've got a d and a b flat d third uh, third string seventh fret to b flat which is the eighth fret of the fourth string so bit of a drum build up thing you could move those two notes down an octave to the d and the b there the b flat there if you want so then 
don't know why I preferred it up the octave. I just like the sound of having that. So this is a B power chord. One and two, three, A, down to an E on beat four. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One and two, three. I'm going to take you all the way through the main guitar part first. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who you going to call? Ghostbusters If there's something weird And it don't look good Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters Basin, so just pop your third finger down there, fourth fret on the thicker string. The timing of that part is really the key thing, so... As far as that guitar part, that's the majority of the song. The other sections are... Now I'm using a slide here, so I'm playing the B up on the 7th fret here instead of the uh, 2nd fret. And sliding it back. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it goes to an E there the very last time. There's that little bridgey part. Um, and then we're back in a... And then there's another... I'm going to leave it to you to put the pieces together in the right order. Right? Just listen to the original recording. You should be able to spot that. The only other section is the... Down, down, down. Ticky, ticky, tick. So I'm just doing A, A. And just doing a muted hit, I think on the original one it's a drum or some percussion instrument, if my memory serves correct. So, one, two, three, four, one. That's the other part. Bustin' makes me feel good. So that's all of the rhythm guitar parts there. Have a listen to the original recording and work out how many times you have to do what bit. Shouldn't be that difficult to hear now that you've got the puzzle pieces. So let's go on and have a little bit of a look at the lead part. So the lead part starts with this little hammer on thing here. First finger, second finger, third finger. Kick, hammer, hammer. This is the third string. And it's just doing that all underneath her. Underneath that is do do It's going right the way through that. That was actually hard and I thought. <laughs> being able to sing that over that. Uh, you might want to try that one yourself. Anyway, and then it stops. Um, and then you've got this... Uh, uh, which is a horn line. So I'm playing ninth fret on the fourth string. And then this is eighth fret on the third string. Very quick hammer on and flick off to the ninth fret with the second finger. And back to the ninth fret on the fourth string. And then this is 6th fret on the 3rd string, 7th fret on the 
fourth string. Then nine, 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 seven, nine. One. I think it's actually a bit shorter. It's better. I'm not even going to try and count that. Just listen to the rest. Slower. One. particularly hard again if even trying to speak the count of that would be difficult so it's going to be very difficult for you to learn it by counting so listen to the original recording much better way of getting that kind of thing in your ear um aside from that there is the so i'm just playing again this is a horn section a horn part i'm playing seventh fret on the third string with a pretty wide vibrato and then ninth fret on the fourth string. So seven, nine, seven, eight, nine on the fourth string. I was exploring for a little while going. But it just didn't kind of work as well as a part. So it, I kind of feel like that might be what's going on. But maybe not. My phone cable's at the end of my back. Weird. Um, so there's that part. Uh, on the... Uh, um, <laughs> It's not on the original recording I was going. So this is the third string going 8th fret down to 6th fret. 3, 4, 1, 2, I just feel like it added something to the harmony and made it work better if I added that note in, but that's definitely not on the record. Uh, what are the other like key parts? Oh, the... There's one lick that Ray Parker plays quite a few times through that song. It's a great lick. This is the second string, 10, 9, 7. 10, 9, 7, then ninth fret on the third string, back to seventh fret on the second string. Then 7, 8 on the third string, to ninth fret root note. So I think that's for the parts that you need to learn to play the song. I think like really important for it would be getting the little intro thing and the and but the other things you could really choose which ones what things you're going to add in there. If you're doing a two guitar band, uh, then you're going to have a well. Actually, some of it depends on if you're the singer as well. If you're the lead guitarist and the singer, you're probably going to play a little less fancy stuff because you're going to have to be thinking about the vocal as well as doing the lead lines. But if you've got a separate singer who's able to concentrate on their job, maybe you start to add in some of the synths, some more of the synth lines, exploring that kind of thing. If you've got a guitar synth, you could definitely add in some really cool little horn sounds and and keyboard sounds that are kind of appropriate for the for the song, or even ones that are inappropriate for the song. Just really have a bit of fun with it. It's definitely a good one if you're playing in a covers band on new year's uh, on new year's eve on halloween uh this is a really great track for that and it's just a fun one to play along with the original recording anyway really hope you enjoyed it have yourself a fantastic halloween stay safe and i'll see you for plenty more very soon bye bye